Check one, two. All right. So, there aren't going to be a whole lot of fancy edits in this video. There's not going to be any fancy edits in this video. Um, there's not going to be any edits, period. The whole reason I'm making this video is to just be honest with everybody. This is just for YouTube. Um, and this is not a, a sad video. This is not anything like a, no one died or anything like that. Um, but on my radio show, I say that it's incredibly important to me that I be honest with my audience, no matter where my audience is, no matter how I interact with my audience. And I take a lot of pride and I have a lot of fun, uh, showing you guys behind the veil. Uh, so I work here in radio. Um, the show airs on KPRC 950 AM here in Houston. That is not the station that I'm in right now. Right now, my uh, nine to five job, as you'd want to call it, uh, is at KTRH. I run KTRH right now. Um, so it's not nine to five. Technically, I work 12 to 8 p.m. every day, Monday through Friday, 12 to 8 p.m. here at 740 KTRH. And in that time slot, again, this is just full disclosure for everybody in that time slot. Uh, Houston is one of the affiliates for uh, Will I Come and it's Rush Limbaugh um, and then it's Sean Hannity and then Michael Berry and then Mark Levin. Uh, and that's when I leave. I leave at 8 p.m. But after Mark Levin is uh, Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis and then Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. I actually had George Norrie on my radio show. So if you subscribe to the podcast, you can go back and listen to my interview with George Norrie. George Norrie is basically the one who got me into radio. Maybe it was Art Bell before him, but Art Bell retired from doing Coast to Coast AM shortly after I started listening to Coast to Coast AM back in the late 90s when I was in middle school. So listening to Coast to Coast AM every night on the radio, on the AM radio, that kind of made me fall in love with radio. To let you further behind the curtain, my dad was a local broadcaster here in Houston for, well, we moved to Houston in 1989 and he worked for Channel 13 ABC on TV. He was an anchorman. So he worked there from 89 to 99 and then he worked for uh, the WB. It was called the WB 39 back in 1999. They've changed names now. I think it's the CW. Uh, he worked there from 1999 to 2009-ish. And so I, I said, I'm not going to do any edits here because I am running the radio station. I am running this Sean Hannity show in, in Houston right now. So you're going to see me doing some edits. Um, let me show you how I do this real quick. It's probably not in focus, but we just hit a little liner. I just played the liner. So now I'm going to wait for two minutes, network spots for two minutes, and then I'm going to play our spots. So I'm going to pot down the network here in a couple minutes and press play on all of our spots. Um, these are just different advertisers and stuff like that. This is just kind of the basic way radio works. So I'm going to turn the camera back around to talk to you guys. That's basically how I run the station from noon to eight. So back to kind of my background and, and my dad and everything. You would think that my dad is why I got into broadcasting, uh, other than how I just explained George Nori is who actually uh, got me bit by the, the radio bug. Uh, my dad actually, even though he had a, a long successful career in broadcasting, my dad passed away in 2013. He was 65. He suffered from, I'm just su being super honest. He suffered from severe PTSD from uh, Vietnam. Um, his experience in Vietnam, he made it to sergeant, and there's only a few ways you make it to sergeant out in the field, and they are not pleasant ways. We won't get too much into that, but let's just say he suffered, my dad suffered a lot with PTSD. Um, what happened to my sister didn't help either. I'll, I'll talk about my sister later on in this video. 
Um, I'm sorry if this sounds like I'm rambling or anything like that. I hope it doesn't seem like I'm rambling, but again, no edits. This is just me flowing from the heart. So my dad's career, he told me as he was retiring, you know, it was some of our last few, you know, conversations that I would would have with him on this earth. Uh, He actually did not encourage getting into broadcasting because broadcasting was not what he it's not it's not the same as when he got into it in the late 60s and early 70s where basically you had only a few outlets for mass communications you had the radio uh, you had television and that was that was pretty much much it by the time his career ended in the early 2010s obviously you had you know in the 90s you had satellite tv you had a uh, satellite radio the high speed internet was just getting into fashion there was before podcasts but digital audio and mp3s and then you had yes podcasts and then you had a, you know 2000 channels on your tv and youtube you have YouTube, uh, then there's Netflix, and all, there's there's an extreme, uh, c- there's a co- new commodity now, and it's it's called attention, like attention span commodity or attention commodity. There's so many things now fighting for your attention. So we are maybe six minutes or so into this video. If you made it six minutes into this video, that is astonishing. That almost never happens. That's a long, long time to hold someone's attention in this modern world of YouTube and Netflix and and uh, podcasts and streaming audio and every everything like that. Um, so yeah, my dad and he actually, he didn't forbid me obviously from getting into broadcasting. He thought it was kind of cool, um, but he just, he wanted the best for his his sons. Uh, he had four or four sons and, and most of them went into uh, stable things like uh, my brother's an accountant. My other brother has opened a coffee shop and a business. Uh, another brother was uh, was worked in legal. Uh, my sister can't work, and I'll tell you about her in a moment. But he just wanted the, the safest avenue for his sons. My dad, despite having his severe PTSD, did work hard and uh, continually over his career to provide the opportunities for us, his children. Now, there's a lot of people who come out of Vietnam who struggle with with addiction and homelessness and I would say my dad I don't somehow making it through and raising a family and not succumbing to homelessness like so many of his 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 brothers in arms were subject to uh, is is a miracle in itself and my dad wasn't the the closest person he, he didn't let people in, really. That's a side effect of PTSD, of course. Um, but he definitely worked hard to provide. Um, so out of that, he said, you know, he encouraged me, said, maybe think, maybe don't get into radio. Just, just understand what you're getting into when you get into broadcasting, that it's not lucrative like it was uh, when he first came up. And it isn't lucrative. I don't, it's super honesty time. It's very hard sometimes to see my friends around me. It's not hard. I I, enjoy, I love their success. I love their success. Most of my friends are extremely successful. You know, they're making six figures. They're starting families. They're doing great. And that absolutely fills my heart with joy. But there's this nagging thing in the back of my head sometimes. And anybody in broadcasting will tell you this, that for, for us doing what we love only slightly outweighs the financial incentives because there are really no financial incentives unless you make it big unless you get a big audience and you get a lot of sponsors if you notice i don't have a ton of sponsors they come and go Uh, i've had audi and different uh arcade bars and uh different things audi was a good get audi was a good get uh but that was seasonal um so there's not a whole lot of money in it, especially at the beginning, and there's no guarantee of money ever, ever happening. When I got my show greenlit, uh, my broadcast, Geek Therapy Radio greenlit, to me that wasn't a celebration for, yes, I've made it. That was a celebration that I've been allowed onto the field of play. That's all that happened there. And 
just law of averages. Most people who are allowed on the field of play will either get injured or they'll lose their contract or just because you're allowed to play the game doesn't mean you're guaranteed any success in it. Uh, furthermore, and I'll get back to my friends and how successful they are and how that ties into all this in a moment. Uh, furthermore, oh, I kind of lost my train of thought. I'll get it back, but there's no edits here. No edits here. When you, there's no guarantee of, of success. And that just means a long time of, of not making much money. I won't divulge exactly how much I make, but if I, let's just put it this way. My wife works at church and makes more than me. Just being super honest. Um, if I told you how much I, I made in, in broadcasting, you would, uh, you would either cry or laugh or it, it's not, it's not a lot of money at all. I just really love what I do. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Further compounding this, the difficulty in making a living in broadcasting is the media I chose to get into, the, the content of my show. If, if you weren't paying attention earlier, I said the, sh the, the, the radio shows that I operate uh, here on KTRH are mostly conservative. And even the radio shows around me on KPRC 950 AM are mostly conservative. And I will have to do one edit here in the middle because my camera's about to run out of time and I have to run the bottom of the hour news. Um, so all the shows around me are, 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 are conservative talk radio for the most part. And here I am in the middle of all of it doing a show at 10 p.m. Saturday nights about geek things. Just sharing my love for different hobbies and different passions and different kind of nerdly, geekly uh outlets that we all share. I say we're all geeks about something. So my show has always been about being the oasis in the desert of politics. There's a place for all the politics. I have nothing against all the politics, but my show, it's not a lightning rod. You know, you have a lot of political hosts on there who say extreme things and love them or hate them, you listen to them. Rush Limbaugh, you love them or hate them, you listen to him. Sean Hannity, you love them or hate them, you listen to him. They're lightning rods. They stir up the drama. It's I don't stir up the drama on Geek Therapy Radio. By nature, it's a very difficult format, very difficult content um, to to make popular on on a broadcast medium. So that's already one thing kind of I won't say it going against me because I am building an audience. That's the thing. That's the miraculous thing about it. I am building an audience and my show has moved up a couple time slots since I've been on. It is a miracle and that's thanks to you guys. I'm going to do an edit here real quick, but uh, uh, we're going to talk about I'm at time slots in the content of my show. So I'm just going to pause it right here real quick to run the news and uh, let the camera take a rest for a second. Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, so the, the content of my show already lends itself to being very difficult to grow. We talk about Star Wars and we talk about art and we talk about music and we talk about different hobbies. Uh, we talk about cloning dinosaurs. I had the 8-bit guy on here recently. He's out with David's always awesome to have on the show. But through it all, it, 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 there's no there's no covering up the fact that you guys are growing with me. You're watching the growth process. Each time I do an interview, I'm constantly thinking and hopefully <clears throat> getting better at the actual interview process. There's a lot of this that it can and can't be taught. You can't teach someone to be natural. Um, you can't really teach someone to have their personality uh, come through while trying to be inf informative. Those are just that's all part of the growth process, and you guys are are growing with me in that endeavor. And the whole reason I'm doing this video is because I, in a few months, I will at least on YouTube, I will be over a thousand subscribers. Which I mean, in the world of of YouTube channels, a thousand is almost nothing. But a thousand is the is the most difficult to achieve. If you uh, listen to Casey Neistat or or any sort of big YouTube channels, you know Casey just recently surpassed 10 million subscribers on his YouTube channel, and he'll tell you that first thousand subscribers is the hardest. And it doesn't matter uh, where you're coming from. You might think you know that just because I have a radio show that's technically in a city of six million people, you know what? Not that doesn't mean all six million people are listening. And my show 
is a non-political show that currently airs at 10 p.m. on Saturday night. That's not rush hour. That's not drive time. So you'd think that maybe doing one show, just saying, oh, go subscribe to Geek Therapy Radio on YouTube, that the channel would instantly get 1,000 subscribers, 5,000 subscribers every time I mentioned it. No. No, 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 no. I, I, the, the ratings, the Nielsen ratings that, that uh, radio uses, my show, it's the, the numbers for any, any show, any show at that time of night that's not Coast to Coast AM on, a, on a, like a huge affiliate or anything like that, any show the numbers are so low that it doesn't register. So I may have a few thousand people listening to me at any given time at 10 p.m. Um, but even still, that number is is so low that it, it barely registers. I, I will say this, though, that when I was on at midnight, so basically Sunday, 12 a.m., the ratings were 0.0, .0 for my time slot. But mine, I got the ratings up to 0.1, which is super rare. Uh, and that gave me hope that that was a little glimmer that, hey, there is an audience for what I'm doing here on broadcast radio, because what I'm doing here, uh, like for the YouTube channel, it fits way better. So if I could showcase if I showcase old computers or talk about specialized subjects that that fits way better for YouTube. Uh, but doing a show like that for broadcast audience is way more is way more difficult. But without rambling too much further uh it, it, it's growing there is an audience there it's it's not the numbers of like a of a rush hour political talk show or anything like that um but the little flicker of hope is it, it's showing itself in the numbers that it's there also through the podcast the podcast is a really good way since it's digital and you can count clicks and plays and stuff like that that's the other glimmer of hope that there's an audience there for it my show airs at, like I said, 10 p.m. on Saturday nights um, over the broadcast, terrestrial radio. Uh, but despite that, my podcast is it's currently number three on the entire station as far as listens and downloads. It's currently number three. Pretty soon it will be number two. The only the podcast that's number one, uh, that's a rush hour show. That's a rush hour drive time political talk show. And that's the only one of the only podcasts that's ahead of me. The second podcast that's ahead of me is a talk show about beer, which is really cool. You should listen to it. It's called What's on Tap Radio. It's my friend James Simpson doing that show. Uh, but he currently sits at about maybe 1,500 listens more than me. And I am rapidly encroaching on that number. So in the next few months, I will surpass surpass his show. Good, friendly competition is great. Um, we wish each other all the best in the world, of course. What, there, it's not a zero-sum game just because you are more successful than someone else. There's room for everybody, just like YouTube. Um, but anyways, this, my show is about to be number two on the entire station. And my show airs once per week. The show that would be ahead of me airs five times a week at rush hour. So that's saying something. That's promise. That's hope. That what I'm doing here kind of means something, and hopefully it's resonating with with my audience. That what you're getting here from me, what I'm trying to sh showcase to you, it may not always be the most polished, you know, the po most polished thing ever. But like I call myself the mental curator, I'm just showing everyone around the museum of geekdom. I'm not going to be a, a, an expert in any one subject, but I say, oh. Cloning dinosaurs, that's pretty cool to talk about. The next week I might be talking about missions to Mars. I am neither a paleontolog paleontologist nor a NASA astronaut. Those things just fascinate me. So on the show, I'll have uh, engineers from NASA or I'll have paleontologists on the show uh, to show you around the museum because I'm just the mental curator. But I hope the honesty shines through. That's why I don't feel too self-conscious about showing kinks in the armor or that things aren't the most polished that they could be because things just going to keep getting better and better. I've only been on for a couple years. They're, they're going to keep getting more polished, of course, but you guys are in on the ground floor, especially here on YouTube with any YouTube content that I do. I'm at a little less than a thousand subscribers right now, uh, about to break that threshold. And that's 100% because of you, because you found something here that was worth was worth following, uh, even worth subscribing to. Even if you're just stopping by and you don't subscribe, that's really cool. Um, but it shows that there's space for someone like me to do what I'm doing, which is to celebrate geekdom. Hey.
It's all right. I guess I'll turn this up a little bit. told you I'm not editing out things like that. Um, I'll put a little text on the screen for you to fast forward over that gap. Um, it would make it way easier to watch this. I know that if I if I did do edits and had a script or something like that, but the, the point of this video is, has always just been honesty. Um, okay, so thank you for helping me build this audience. Thank you for being part of the audience and, and believing in what I do, or at least being entertained by it. Um, let me turn down Sean Hannity because we certainly don't want to be hearing that in the background. So I said I would mention my sister. And this ties into the entire, one of the biggest reasons that I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, I, I've debated... I debated when and if I would ever share this information and, and I'm sharing it now while I'm on YouTube. I, this is not on the broadcast. This is not even on the podcast. This is only on YouTube. I'm sharing it right now with my small YouTube subscriber base because, because we are small right now. We have that little level of intimacy right now. Um, there's really nothing in it for me to divulge this information. I feel like if I divulge this information when I had, when I had, if I ever have a million subs or 10 million subs on this particular uh, medium, this particular YouTube outlet, I feel it would, it would cheapen what I'm about to, to share with you. But since we're below a thousand subs, we're kind of, we can be closer like this. Um, when my dad came back from, from Vietnam, he started a family. And he had my two older brothers and then my sister. My sister is right in the middle. And then after my sister is me and my little brother. So one day when my sister was two years old, she was a toddler. My dad came home from work. We lived in San Antonio. My dad came home from work and found his only little girl floating in the pool. She was two years old and remember my dad was a sergeant in vietnam he's lost people that he's tried to to protect to try to keep safe as much as you can in wartime no matter what we would tell him you can't civvies us civvies as he would say we can't console someone with ptsd who has experienced things that we'll never experience that i've never experienced so while his army buddies would call him a hero, I don't think my dad ever felt like that. People died under his watch. People got hurt under his watch. So fast forward a few years getting home from Vietnam and finding his only little girl floating in the pool. That was another, that was another person in his troop basically that he felt he failed to protect or he couldn't protect and he took that hard he was in the hospital my, my sister was underwater the doctors uh, estimate for about 20 minutes she was dead uh, she survived she's alive today and I'll tell you about her condition in a moment because as you could imagine her condition is not good anyways back in the hospital as they're doing everything have her on life support to try to save her life and my camera might die in here in a second but i'll keep the audio rolling and just start the camera again um in the hospital that night my dad was pacing the halls and with his hands in his face as you as any parent would be you know your little girl's dying basically he was 
begging the doctors he knew it was irrational but you know in that st- he was begging the doctors give her my brain she, she had so much brain damage give her my brain give her my brain obviously you can't do that but that's that's what he was willing to do for for his family for his little girl so the doctors obviously couldn't give her his brain so the doctor said she's not going to survive through the night then they said she's not going to survive the next day she's not going to survive the next week she'll be dead within a month there's no way she's going to live past a year here we are 30 some odd years later and my sister is alive she's quadriplegic can't talk can't feed herself can't do anything herself she's fed through a stomach tube um so that's her situation and why does this play into why i got into what i'm doing why i got into to the media got into broadcasting uh let me just say right now that our family is okay my dad's passed away and everything my family is okay my sister is not in a home my sister lives with my mom and i live nearby in houston my mom lives about 30 miles north i live south in the med center of houston so i'm always nearby and my little brother is always nearby as well um but my sister lives with my mom there are finances there for her but they may not always be there for her regardless i wanted to get into a profession to where three things could be possible one eventually get it to the point where i can do the show and create the content from anywhere that'll be important in a second two that what i do and the content i create will help people the whole purpose of geek therapy radio and what i'm doing here is to connect people with their inner geek thing connecting with new hobbies new passions because a lot of times when not just for the doldrums of life but even if we're depressed even if we're severely depressed sometimes all we have are our hobbies our passions interests and sometimes that sometimes to help us out of the slump we'll learn a new hobby or a new passion that can help us out of that depression in addition to doctors of course and therapists so what i'm trying to do here is if i help one person even through listening to my show or rifling through my content find something new that interests them and that helps them in some way even one person i will consider myself a success and i do consider myself a success uh so as the show as as i hopefully get more successful successful with this and hopefully as more finances come in that's one thing a thousand subs on youtube helps with is you can start monetizing videos i will never have a patreon because the plan is i will have you know sponsors for the radio show i might do sponsors for the the youtube channel when it comes bigger but i'm never asking for a patreon i have nothing against patreon i have nothing against people supporting a channel monthly from their own out of their own pocket but as long as i have advertisers and sponsors on my videos i can't i'm not double dipping it seems dishonest to me and disingenuous to have someone paying for the show and then ask you the viewer to pay for it also that's that's kind of shady i'm never going to do a patreon unless i lose the radio show if i lose the radio show which means i lose the sponsors then maybe i'll start a patreon but anyways i wanted to get into something that when it became successful not only would it generate enough income to make sure my sister is continually provided for i should have mentioned that i am the guardian of my sister when my mom passes away i'm in her will that i am my sister's legal guardian so i wanted to be able to make this content from anywhere that means having my sister nearby either living in the house or uh at a nice facility in town that i can visit every day to make sure that she's as happy as she can be and around people and being cared for but ideally have her in the same building as i am basically be able to feed my sister maybe suction her or whatever like that and then come do a segment of the radio show or a video for youtube um so that's one reason i got into this is so i could help people who are depressed maybe find something that will help them out of their depression 
um, but also keep me available to help my sister or care for my sister. Um, I don't, I, I don't really, we're th about 30 minutes into this already. I don't know how much, if you guys are still watching, I, I doubt that very many people are still watching by now. That's kind of not the whole point of this. This is for the more dedicated of you that you just understand where I'm coming from. I'm not going to share pictures of my sister. That's, for one thing, That's I, that wouldn't be fair to her. And she's not, her type of disabled if I was in her condition, her physical state, I would not want my picture all over the place. My camera just died. I'm try to maybe turn it back on again. So I'm not going to share pictures of my sister for any sort of brownie points or views or anything like that. Because that, for one thing, that's not going to help views at all. There's, there's no real. What I'm doing isn't specific enough to to generate views on YouTube. To generate views on YouTube, I would need to talk about something specifically, like I would need to talk about the new MacBook Pro or something like that, and I would need to repeat the word MacBook Pro 2,000 times in the script to hit the logarithm and put MacBook Pro on the title and MacBook Pro in the description and all that kind of stuff to hit the logarithm. What I'm talking about here is nothing specific. The only views that I'm going to get here are just from basically subscribers, um, and if you share the video or something like that, that's that's how this content would spread but i don't anticipate that really happening and that's not the goal here this i'm just sharing with my family right now um because i really want you guys and gals and all my geeks to feel like you're a part of this and you're a part of something again this will not be a podcast this will definitely not air on the radio this is just for my current YouTube subscribers and anyone else, anyone else subscribing to the channel later on who might happen across this. Um, it's a long video. That's not, that doesn't help the, my logarithm really because it's a long, varied video. I, I've talked too much. If I think of something else to say, I'll, I'll upload another video about it. Um, usually my videos are way more specific and I plan to keep that up. So if you stumble across this video, that's really cool. I just wanted to be really honest with everybody and let you behind the veil, behind the curtain, just to see what, I've, what I'm doing and what I'm thinking and how I'm feeling uh, in doing this show and doing Geek Therapy Radio. So I'll wrap it up now. Thank you for watching. Um, if you want to consider subscribing, if you're stumbling on this and you're not already subscribed, subscribing would be, would be great because I know you don't have to. There's a lot of content to choose from here on YouTube. Uh, so I know you don't have to subscribe to this channel. So if you do, that just that's awesome. We have this tendency that if a channel doesn't have a million subs, we're less likely to subscribe to it because, well, they're not very popular. There's probably nothing there that I like. So any subscriber I do get, that's really cool right now because it is a small channel and <laughs> there is no reason why you you have to subscribe. It's not like what I'm doing is the coolest thing in the world here. I'm not parasailing or launching model rockets or something like that. I could. But I'm not, that's not what I'm specifically about. Uh, anyway, I've, I've talked too long. Thank you for watching. I uh, hope you've learned a little bit more about me and what I'm doing here uh, with, with my show. Um, and don't be afraid to reach out to me. Let me know what your geek thing is. I would love to showcase what you're into. Whatever it is, um, whatever your geek thing is, that's that's kind of what I'm here for. That's what I'm all about. And that's what I want to share with with everybody, with each other. Is Let's come together. We're so divided in this country, so divided in this world, but Republican, Democrat, white, black, brown, whatever you are, we all love Star Wars and Star Trek and building model airplanes and all sorts of fun things and computers and games. And there's so much more that we have in common that which that which divides us apart. So thank you for being a part of Geek Therapy Radio. And uh, that's it. No fancy out cue. Just thanks for watching. And uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care of yourselves. And that's what I was recording.